Good morning and welcome to First John Methodist Church and to our awakening service today. I'm Becky Brown, Associate Pastor, and we're really glad to have you join us in worship. Um, I hope that you had a chance to um, pick up our bulletin on the way in. There's a whole page of announcements of ways to get to connected with our church, and so we hope that you'll take a look at this. One thing I wanted to mention, um, one main thing I wanted to mention was Lent is right around the corner Um, Lent is our season of six weeks where we um, focus inward and we focus outward as well um, to develop spiritual practices um, and ready ourselves for Easter. And so we begin that with Ash Wednesday, which is March 2nd. So that's a really quick calendar flip, and all of a sudden um, we find ourselves in Lent. So we invite you to come and join us um, for our Ash Wednesday service. We'll do the imposition of the ashes on your forehead, have a time for prayer, spiritual reflection, songs and a a meditation from Keith. That'll be at 6.30 in person in the sanctuary. We're also offering a drive-through experience, so if you're working or unable to come or you don't feel comfortable coming in person, um, then we're going to offer that from 12 to 1 in the big parking lot. You can come through, receive the ashes on your forehead, Um, we'll have prayer with you, and then you can be on your way. We'll also have an exclusive online service as well for anybody who would like to worship that way or both. (laughs) You're welcome to do that. We're also going to be um, journeying through Lent, a sermon series um, that we're going to be embarking upon, and I let the Sunday school leaders know about it. If you're connected in a Sunday school class, you might hear about it later on this morning, but if you are looking for a book or you're thinking, maybe I'd like to read through a book to connect me, to ground me, um, these sermons will will, um, pick up themes from this book, and there's more information here. It's called Finding Your Bearings, How Words That Guided Jesus Through Crisis Can Guide Us by James Harnish. So I encourage you to look into that and maybe grab a couple of friends if you'd like to sit down and discuss the themes of the sermons, um, discuss the themes in the books. It could be a really great opportunity for you to grow in faith that way. Clean and Green begins back on March the 6th, and there's information about preschool if you'd like to register your child um, for next year or for the summer. So those are all of the things that I have to share with you today. So let us stand and let's greet one another and bump the peace of Christ. together as we uh, lift up in praise. This dry desert land, I find myself keep walking on. Here's something up ahead, water falling like a song. An everlasting stream, the river carries me home. Let it flow, let it flow.
Jesus, Lord. Come and rain down on us, rain down on us, Lord. Come and rain down on us, rain down on us, Lord. Come and rain.
concern that you'd like to share um, with her, with our staff, please text her and let her know that you don't have to just do it on Sunday. You can do it anytime. But if there's something you'd like to share this morning with our community of faith, uh, we ask that you do that. So, kids, sit tight because here's Pastor Becky. Good morning, everybody. It's good to be with you today for our children's lesson. Today, we're going to be thinking a little bit about what Pastor Keith is preaching about um, in his sermon. Pastor Keith is going to talk about um, our scripture lesson from the Gospel of Luke, where Jesus says some very interesting things, some things that maybe are a little confusing. Because Jesus tells the people who have gathered there to listen, to learn, that they need to love their enemies and pray for those who are mean to them or who bully them. So today I want you to do a little something. I want you to imagine one person, just one, who you may think of as an enemy. Maybe this is a little hard for you. But maybe there's one person who, no matter how hard you try to be their friend, they just don't want to talk to you or be your friend. Or maybe there's someone who used to be your friend and you got in an argument and now won't ever speak to you or is mean to you instead. Or maybe there's someone who is just always mean and no matter how hard you try to be nice to them, they just stay mean. You know, sometimes there are people that we just feel like we can't do anything about, right? We've tried all the things to be their friend. We've tried kindness. We've tried saying you're sorry, and people just are still mean. Well, in this example where Jesus is teaching, Jesus says to love our enemies, to pray for people. And to love our enemies, we need to treat them like we would want to be treated. This is hard because it doesn't seem like it's possible, right? But this is what God wants us to do, to spend time in prayer and show love to those who we don't think deserve it. And that's mercy, showing kindness and love 
to those that we don't think need it. But sometimes that's what it's like to be Christians, is to try to do the things that other people think, and we even think, are impossible. But let me tell you, once you start saying prayers for them, and once you start um, learning how to show them love like you would like to be loved, that changes people, and that changes you. So let's give it a try. As we go to God in prayer today, I have a few to mention that have been emailed or messaged to me over the weekend. And um, just a reminder, anytime, that's my number, um, go ahead and save it in your phone if you would like to have it. And um, message me anytime, call me. I'm happy to add you to my prayer journal and pray privately or with the whole congregation for whatever it is that you're struggling with or someone that you love is struggling with um, or just to celebrate your joys because we do that to do together as well. So I'd like to mention a few today. Um, several people's family members are struggling. Um, so we pray for Sheila Fowler. She, both of her parents are in the hospital um, her mother's doing a little better, but her father has pneumonia and has been moved to ICU. Um, so we pray for um, John and Gladys Bowie. Janice Laudier, um, her father, Jim Kidwell, lives in San Antonio, and he fell and hit his head, and he has a small brain bleed, so he still is having further testing. So we're praying for them. We've been praying for Jane Williams' sister, Judy. She's had COVID and has been in the hospital for um, several weeks. Um, she had to have an emergency gallbladder surgery, and they found something on her kidneys, and she still is unable to breathe without oxygen, so she is in the CCU there. Corinne Faircloth asked for prayers for her friend, Joe G., who's having a leg surgery on Tuesday, and her cousin's daughter, Haley, um, is pregnant with a second child and then just found out that her husband, Alex, has orders to deploy this week. So prayers for all military families. We also had um, a couple of deaths affect our congregation. Elizabeth Klein, who is Susan Ballantyne's sister-in-law, died this week, as well as Jerry Reif, who is a former member of our church. So we pray for all of them. So let us pray together. Oh God, we are grateful that when faith gets tough, <laughs> when the words in the Bible make life complicated, when, we're, when we read your words and we wonder how to even live as you call us to live, that in those moments of confusion or disorientation or frustration, that we not only have you to turn to in prayer and guidance, but also each other. We give you thanks for friendships in Christ, where we can lean on others and ask questions about how to continue doing this life together with you. Because walking the way of Jesus isn't always simple. Living the way according to your scriptures and according to your example sometimes causes us to scratch our heads and wonder. But yet, when in those difficult times where being a Christian, being a Christ follower is hard, we ask that we would be bold enough and be courageous enough to continue to walk in your way. For we know that you have our best interest at heart, and that you desire for all of your people to feel loved, to feel accepted, and to see mercy. So help us to do that together as a body of faith. God, we pray for those we've mentioned today, for many people's parents are in the hospital and sick. Others have lost dear loved ones and friends. We pray for all of the military families who are anticipating a deployment soon. Pray for their safety and their return home, wellness in mind, body, and spirit. We pray for those who are having surgeries and who have continued illnesses that go on and on. And we pray for our relationships with one another. For we know there's always a struggle somewhere, it seems. 
Because relationships aren't always easy. There are bumps in the road. There are times in which we know there needs to be healing. So God, we ask that you would help us to do that very thing, to usher in your Holy Spirit and to provide healing and wholeness and peace. In the name of Christ that we pray, amen. This time we'll ask the ushers to come forward as we give our gifts back. Um, this morning our offertory is going to be um, a song that the, the words are, are ones that we can reflect on too. Um, it's one of my favorite lost and found songs. It's, it's, it talks more about than just, you know, our belief, our faith in God, but um, what our life is. And Becky talked about it in her children's message and a little bit in the prayer. And Keith is going to challenge us today about, um, you know, how, how do we live a life? Um, how do we put Christ in those, in those tough situations and those um, conflicts that we have? Um, how, how can we make our life be a reflection of what God has? And so we sing this song. Think of the things in your life that we can let go of. Um, that are keeping us from from God and from one another. And then let's think of the things that we can add in there so that our life can be a true reflection of what God is. The chorus is easy. It goes, And let my life be a reflection of the love that you have shown. Let your love be my direction. And my heart will be your home. Let my life be a reflection of the love. Trumpet sound in the heavens part and the moon is red and the sky is dark. The heavens shake, the mountains quake and the storms cry out your name. The hills are sweet and full of green. The one one sing and the old one dream. The angels fly, the and the mysteries are played. Luke 27 through 36. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. 
do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be the children of the high, Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Ben was just a baby, and Ben was our first child, so I was a brand new dad. And I, I really was just loving every minute of that. I mean, I'm serious. Like, even when Ben would wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning for an early breakfast and a diaper change, I, mean, I was genuinely all over that. And in those days, my wife Chan was a flight attendant with Delta Airlines, and so she would be gone for days at a time. So Ben and I got to hang out together quite a bit. And I try to tell him uh, that that's why he turned out to be such a really good kid. I'm not sure he's having any of that. One of our favorite things to do was to go to the grocery store. And so I would be putting Ben in his car seat, and you know, um, we would rub noses and make those googly googly noises that you make with your babies. And I would t take the end of my big termin nose and just put it right in his mouth. And he would, with those little gums, he would just gum on the end of my nose. He loved it. Uh, when I'm uh, reminiscing and talking about these good old days, uh, Ben, now he just kind of looks at me with this incredulous look of disgust and is like, Dad, who does that? So one day, we're at the Walmart. It's Tractor Supply now, but it used to be the Walmart. And I'm getting him out of his car seat, and we're rubbing noses, and we're making the googly noises, and I stick the end of my nose in his mouth, and I'm not sure how this happened, but Ben had grown four little teeth right there in front, just like a squirrel. And he, he latched on to the end of my nose, and he wouldn't let go. Like, you can imagine the scene. Like, if you're witnessing this, if you're coming out of Walmart, here's this guy screaming, arms flailing. Um, and I suppose it was his only way of saying, Dad, you've crossed the line. <laughs> like, your behavior is entirely unacceptable. And the end of my nose was a deep, dark purple. In Jesus' sermon for today, like it's got some serious bite. And, and I wonder, when I hear it, and when we hear it together, what are we actually supposed to do with a sermon like this? If you're like me, it, it just feels like it's in this, the realm of Im, impossible. And I think it also kind of hits close to home, too. Like Jesus says, love your enemy, do good to those who hate you. And sometimes it just feels like enemies are all around. And like uh, the hatred in the air, it's, it's just thick. I think about those things that divide us. And it just feels like there's lots of them. Maybe they've always been there, but I feel them more now. Like our, our political divisions, we all feel that. We even feel um, religious divisions, like in our community. Like our, our differences and, and, and the way we carry ourselves as followers of Christ, we, we tend to clash with each other. Um, what we, we think about um, our, our issues with gender, uh, sexual identity, uh, those things that divide us, the cultural clashes, uh, and, and the socioeconomic stuff. And all of that is just this breeding ground for anger and, and hatred and, and maybe even violence. Uh, New, New Testament scholar uh, Susan Hyland says, um, in our text, this 
this sermon that Jesus preaches where he says, I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also from anyone who takes away your coat. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. If anyone takes your goods, don't ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. This sermon, she says, Jesus prescribes this um, ethic of generosity for Christians living in a hostile world. New Testament scholar N.T. Wright, he talks about this, and, and he says it's an absurd generosity. Like, um, think of the best thing that you could do for the worst person, and then do it. It's like planting seeds on the sidewalk and expecting flowers to grow. Well, I began to ask myself, who is my enemy? You know, my, my enemy, I think oftentimes, is in one of those camps. They're my enemy because um, they stand against everything that I am for. Um, I think sometimes my enemy is my enemy because they're just simply against me. And then sometimes I realize that I am my enemy. And oftentimes, I'm your enemy. So I find myself offended or I'm hurt. And my behavior changes. So I'm, I'm more angry. I, I'm, I'm more hateful. I'm, I'm more inclined to say and do things that I don't normally say and do. And then I think to myself, well, it's your fault. It's their fault. I'm so messed up because they're so messed up. And you know, the problem with this is that that's what they're thinking too. And there becomes this cycle of, of feeling and behavior. And I don't know, if you're like me, sometimes I wonder, how do we get out of this? How do we move to this better place in all of these areas? So an interesting thing to me is that we can get, get mad at God, too. Like the sermon makes us mad at God. Because as Luke writes it, Luke says, uh, God is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Matthew's version of it, God makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. And we cry out, that's not fair. And, and Jesus tells these stories. There's the parable of, of the vineyard owner who has his vineyard and he needs people to work. He doesn't have enough laborers. And so he goes into the square and, and he hires people to come work in his vineyard. And it's early in the morning. And so they go and they're working, but he still needs more. And so he goes midday into the square and there's still people there. And he's like, hey, come work. And they do. And they're working in his vineyard. And then he goes and it's just about quitting time. And there's still people in the square. And Jesus says, come work. Or the, the, par the owner of the vineyard says, come work in my vineyard. And they do. And then it's quitting time. And the owner is paying all of the laborers. And he pays them all exactly the same thing. And it's offensive. And the people who started working at sunrise, they can't believe that the owner is paying the other people the same thing. It's just not fair. And the response of the vineyard owner is something like this. Do you begrudge my generosity? And Jesus tells this parable of a prodigal son. There's actually two prodigal sons, and there's a loving father, and the older brother is offended by the father's grace. The older brother is angry because of this party that's being thrown for his reckless younger brother. And the father's response is, you know, something like, uh, no, this is the right 
response because your brother was dead and is now alive. Your brother is lo- was lost and is, is now found. You know, when the sermon grows teeth, there's reason for us to hope. Like, it's hard for us to hear, and it's even harder for us to do, but imagine for just one moment if everyone, ourselves included, began to behave in the manner that Jesus describes. Our world would be an entirely different place. And the truth is, sometimes a flower grows through the concrete. Many years ago, um, my, my wife, Chan's brother, Todd, got married, and they wanted to get married here in Waynesville at the chapel at Lake Gileska. So you know how weddings go. We're all getting excited, and um, we uh, hosted in our home um, my sister-in-law, Amy's mom. She had come from out of town, and it was just a, it was just a, a delightful weekend, the wedding, and we had a, a nice reception thing at the at the faith church shelter well after the weekend's over and everybody's going home we, we get this phone call and it's from amy's mom who had stayed with us at our home um, in crusoe she says i can't find my teeth i think i left my teeth at your house could you could you find my teeth and and mail them to me amy was mortified I thought it was awesome. Like, she just called up, hey, I've lost my teeth. Could you mail me my teeth? And I'm like, of course. You gotta have your teeth. Or else life is just milk toast and porridge. I need my teeth. And the truth is, Without teeth, we will never be able to bite through this stuff that Jesus is talking about. And, and I'm not so sure that we can grow the teeth that we need. At least not in our own strength. You know those, those crazy stories of forgiveness and reconciliation that we hear? Like I believe in miracles, and I'm convinced that those are miracle stories. It doesn't happen unless the Spirit of God gets involved. And so it helps me to remember what the Apostle Paul said or wrote to the church in Rome. He says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. For sermons like this. There's an ancient prayer practice, and I want us to practice it today. Um, It's a a, a pray through the scriptures. And I'm sure you've probably done that. We just take our our scripture text and we just pray through it. And I want us to to pray through our scripture text now. And so, um, however you want to posturize and um, just get into a a prayer posture that's comfortable for you. Um, Sometimes it's helpful to close your eyes. Let's pray together. Oh God, we take a a deep breath. And we hear you say, I say to you that listen, Jesus says, I say to you that listen. So we're listening, Lord. We hear you say, love your enemies. 
God, reveal this person. Maybe it's more than one person. Help us to look at them, to really see them. Help us to remember that they belong to you, that you are merciful, that you are kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. We open our heart to you and we hear you say, do good to those who hate you. God, we have no idea what that looks like. Help us to imagine what that looks like. Show me one good thing that I can do. Show us one good thing that we can do. We hear you say, bless those who curse you. Okay. Lord, bless my enemies. Help me not to curse them. Forgive me for the times I have cursed them. Help me to see them as you see them. Help me to love them, to do and want the best for them in the same way as I want the best for me. We hear you say, pray for those who abuse you. Lord, what does it mean for me to let my enemy have the other side of my face? How how can I respond without validating their darkness and their violence? How can I respond without becoming the one throwing the punches? We open our ears to you, Lord, and we hear you say, when someone steals your coat, give them your shirt. But I've worked hard for my things. When the thief comes, how do I not call the police? How can I possibly respond by giving them more? How can I get to this place where the usurper of my possessions becomes more important than my ownership of those possessions? Give to everyone who is begging from you. Who is begging from me? You say that my reward will be great, that I will be your child. Oh Lord, be kind to me. Have mercy on me that I might see your face and dare to hope for a smile. Amen.
your family and your children and their children and their children may your presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going and your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you he is for you Thanks for coming today. As we go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go in peace. Amen.